Hey gang, it's your old buddy Platt, and today I'm going to show you how to make beef jerky. So let's go. Welcome everybody, my name is Platt, and this is the Platt Art Channel. If you are new to the channel, thanks for stopping by, thanks for watching. Uh, check out some of our other videos. Uh, I make beer, I make wine, mead, all kinds of alcoholic beverages, so check out those videos. If you're a regular to the channel, you might be scratching your head right now, thinking, well, wait a minute, you're my booze guy. Why are you doing making beef jerky? Valid question, and don't worry, we're going to keep making beer and wine and other things. Um, this, uh, I was recently, though, inspired. Uh, recent, I was having a conversation with somebody about beer and food pairings, and just beef jerky came up, and I thought, man, I'd love to know how to make beef jerky. Also, it's tough to eat a good stick of beef jerky and a cold beer. I don't think too many of y'all would argue that. So I was inspired to do a little research and decided today we're going to make some beef jerky. Um, the recipe I'm using today is kind of uh, a lot of jerky recipes in their simplest form. So I mean, there's tons and hundreds and hundreds of jerky re recipes out there. You make, you know, teriyaki jerky. You know, different flavored jerkies, uh, turkey jerky, elk jerky, what have you. You can go as crazy as you want on that. This recipe is kind of just the core that I've seen in a lot of recipes. These are kind of the base ingredients. So we're going to go with that. If you want to expand on it or, you know, add something else, feel free. But like I said, this is just the base recipe. And I'll leave uh, the recipe in the uh, description down below, so feel free to uh, copy that. Uh, real quick, the basics, soy sauce. I've seen it in practically every recipe, soy sauce in there. Worcestershire sauce, onion powder. I have garlic salt. You can use garlic powder, a lot of people back and forth, depending on some people don't want too much sodium in their beef jerky. Usually there's a lot. I'm not too worried about so. Uh, garlic salt there and then salt and pepper these are pretty much the basics you know if you want to add paprika or pepper you know feel free but these are kind of the basics and this is what we're going to stick with today now there are two or three other items there are a couple other items that are popular in most beef jerky recipes uh, I, I left out but feel free to add uh, one is brown sugar a lot of people like brown sugar in there a lot of people like a little sweetness in their beef jerky. Not that big a deal for me. Um, also, too, some people will say, well, I like beef jerky, so it's a low-carb deal, so if you're adding sugar, but leave out the sugar if you don't like. But a lot of people add brown sugar. Uh, also, a lot of people add liquid smoke. They like a little bit of smokiness uh, with their beef jerky. Now, a little bit of research I've done, and I'd heard this before, that liquid smoke... There's some research done, and I think there may be some carcinogens in liquid smoke, or the process that makes it could have some potential, you know, cancerous concerns. Uh, kind of like the whole deal with uh, saccharin years ago. You know, if you give uh, little mice eight pounds of the stuff, they get cancer. I, before I gather, it's something similar there. But if you're concerned about it, again, don't use the liquid smoke. And if you want a smoky flavor, you have a couple options. You could throw something in like smoked paprika in to kind of add a little smokiness. Or if you have a smoker with a real low temperature setting, you could, you could uh, throw your beef jerky in the smoker and get that smokiness. But uh, those two items we're not going to have in our recipe, but again, if you like, feel free. Uh, also, feel free just throw in a random uh, mystery ingredient like... Uh, you know, if you want to spice it up, maybe a little Cholula. Uh, this actually is a Chipotle Cholula. Uh, gives you a little bit of that smokiness right there. You don't need anything. But anyway, like I said, feel free to tweak however uh, you want. But uh, just going to kind of show you a very basic recipe today. This is, in, in full disclosure, this is my first time making uh, jerky. So we're kind of new at this together. So let's get to making jerky. And the first thing we're going to do is make our marinade. All right, so our first ingredient is going to be a quarter cup of soy sauce. And we're just going to mix this in a little 
little bowl. All right. There we go. That's the uh, largest amount of liquid ingredients, so we'll put that in first. Then we're going to add two tablespoons of Worcestershire sauce. One, and two. All right, next we're going to add one tablespoon of our garlic salt. Like I said, you can use garlic powder. We're going with garlic salt. Then one teaspoon, it was one teaspoon of garlic salt, no tablespoon, my bad. And a teaspoon of our onion powder. All right. And then we're going to add a teaspoon each of salt and pepper. Now is our pepper, now our salt, one to grow on. All right, there we go. All right, and we're just going to stir that together. We don't have to get it too, too stirred, just get everything together. All right, and we're gonna sit this in the fridge real quick, and next we're going to prep our meat. All right, let's start off first by talking about meat selection. Um, probably the best cuts are top round. Uh, this is a bottom round. Uh, flank steak could be used. Anything that's not too fatty. Now, this has a little bit of fat. If you get a cut of meat that has some fat, cut that away. Um, you don't want too much fat for this meat because that fat never really dries out and uh, I'll cut some of that away the fat never really dries out and it can go bad on you you know after a, a few days of sitting sitting out after we make the jerky so you don't you want to cut away too much excess fat some of this in between won't, won't uh, do much harm also, too, you want to make sure you have thin slice. This is this is just about right, somewhere between an eighth and a uh, quarter of an inch thick. You don't want too much thicker because it'll take just a long time to dry. Uh, so kind of make it a personal preference thing, you know, whether, you know, how thick you want it. But I wouldn't go really anything over a quarter of an inch. So, I'm going to continue to cut the fat away, and then we will come back, when I get this done, we'll come back, and uh, we'll add the meat to our marinade. All right, uh, we finished trimming the fat off our meat. Uh, real quick, I want to state, this recipe is for one pound. I'd gotten one pound of slice, bottom round. Uh, they sliced it for me, so I got it nice and thin, but you could do that at home. But anyway, this is a one-pound recipe, one to one and a half pounds. Uh, so if you made a bigger batch, it's easier. You know, if you had three pounds, just uh, triple the recipe. So real quick, though, we're going to take our trimmed beef, and we're just going to work it in our marinade. Make sure we get everything, every bit of that piece of meat in the marinade. And then we're going to put it in a little Ziploc bag. Uh, we're going to leave, uh, from, from my research, most of the beef jerky you, you're, you're going to leave in your marinade from anywhere to four to eight hours. Uh, I'm just going to leave it overnight. That makes my life a little simpler and yours too. And really lets it soak up that marinade. So... That's what we're going to do. We're just going to leave it in a little Ziploc bag. 
Um, after I soak these pieces, I'm just going to dump the rest of the marinade in the bag. So we will use all of that marinade. And like I said, you want to make sure you get everything nice and coated because you don't want to have any just plain Jane jerky. You want to get all that flavor in the jerky. Looks like we're going to, looks like that one pound recipe is just perfect. It's going to soak up. We pretty much have soaked up all that marinade. I got one little piece left. <laughs> all right. So, our next dip is I'm going to throw this in the fridge and we're going to leave it overnight. And then we'll come back tomorrow to actually uh, cook our jerky. All right. So, we let our meat sit overnight in the marinade. It soaked up all that flavor. And now we're ready uh, to uh, to go ahead and uh, we'll get ready to dehydrate it. The first thing we need to do, though, is to take our meat out. It's been soaking up all that marinade. And we want to take just a paper towel and we just want to soak up some of that excess moisture. The marinade's penetrated in, but we don't... Um, we don't want all that moisture still in the meat because remember we're dehydrating it. So we just want to take off some of the excess moisture. And then we're going to go ahead and lay it. I have a couple of stainless steel racks. We're going to lay it here. Birds fired up for uh, jerky. Um, let me go ahead and do this. We'll get everything, cover our racks, get the moisture off our meat, and then we'll come back. And I'll talk to you, we're going to use our oven to make our jerky. I'll talk to you about the oven in just one sec. All right, so I took a paper cloth or a paper towel and dried off uh, the meat or got off the excessive moisture. Laid them out on my racks. You want to make sure that you don't overlap the meat. You don't want it to, uh, to touch really because you want to make sure A, you get proper airflow through. And, and B, if they're touching, uh, sometimes that just that part of the meat doesn't dry out and we want to avoid that. So make sure to give plenty of space. Uh, if you want to, I haven't cut the slices I have into smaller pieces. That's up to you. Uh, I've seen where some people will cut them after they've uh, dried, which is what we may do. So anyway, we've got our meat on our racks ready to go. And now we're going to... Uh, preheat our oven. Um, we're going to use an oven instead of a dehydrator or smoker. A lot of people don't have those things, but most people have an oven. So we're going to use the oven. Uh, we're going to sit it as low as possible. Um, my oven goes down to 170. If you could get down to like the 160 range, that'd be perfect. But anywhere from 150 to 170 would do just fine. I went ahead and laid out some tin foil on there, so if there is some drippings, I'm not worried about uh, messing up my oven. So with that being said, we're going to go ahead, put in our beef jerky into the oven. Uh, we're shooting about four hours for the uh, entire process in the oven. We'll come back each hour and just check on it, see how it's doing. So uh, let's come back in an hour. Okay, so it's been about one hour. And the beef's starting to dry out. It's still, still fairly limp. Uh, the edges are starting to crisp up a little bit. So we're going to let this go for a couple of more hours. And we'll come back around the three-hour mark uh, to see where we're at. Okay, so we're about three hours into the process. And we can see now our jerky's starting to stiffen up a little bit it's still fairly bendy but the edges were starting to get nice and crisp um oh yeah see that looks that right there the it's starting to really look like beef jerky a uh, little tip you might try uh is i hear that if you keep the oven door cracked a little bit especially if you have thicker pieces of meat that helps the process but we've probably got another hour or so left, so let me throw this back in, and we'll come back to wrap up. 
All right, gang, our beef jerky is ready. Uh, it took a little longer than I thought. I originally said we we're going to shoot for four hours. Uh, it came out to be about five hours. But as we can see, beef jerky nice and stiff. Uh, this is a real simple recipe. Uh, we took one pound of sliced bottom round. Uh, we trimmed off a little bit of the fat. We added our marinade, which I'll leave the recipe uh, in the description below. And uh, we let that set in the marinade overnight. And then we put in our oven on racks for five hours. And voila, we have beef jerky. But now is the moment of truth. Let's give her a try. Oh, yeah, I got a nice little snap on that. Oh, man. Yes, yes, yes. That is good, kids. I think I found a new hobby. Um, not that I'm going to stop making beer and wine videos. Don't worry about that. Um, for my old viewers, just wanted to try something new. Just, you know, variety of spice life. But we'll keep making beer and wine. Uh, for my new viewers, I'm, I'm always making stuff all the time. Um, might have to try this again. This is pretty good. Well, I hope you like this video. If you did, please subscribe down below. Also, please like the video because it lets YouTube know we're putting out good content. If you have any questions, comments, concerns, please leave me in the comment section. Or you can contact me on the Twitter page. Well, until next time, bottoms up.